Test, test one, two. Is that little green bar going back and forth? Uh -huh. Testing why one, why two. Why don't you just say what happened just so we have it? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this is my second road mic, and <laughs> I've been having so many problems. Okay, so I don't know anything about cameras. I don't know anything about videography, vlogging. Um, yeah, I've been trying to get the mic to work for like three hours now, um, and I had the the cord plugged into the headphone jack rather than the audio output jack which are right next to each other um yeah sony you need to fix that <laughs> change where the jack is i'm so stupid uh, okay but who figured it out taylor taylor figured it <laughs> out what's up everybody welcome back to our channel welcome back to our vlog um, this video is going to be a little different uh, than what you're normally going to see on this channel. Uh, Taylor's not going to be in this video at all. It's going to be just me and I'll be addressing the number one question we get when it comes to the pictures we're taking and posting on Instagram and the videos that we're doing and that is what camera are we using? What equipment are we using? Um, so I'm going to run through all of that with you guys today. I'm not going to get into the real nitty gritty of each piece of equipment that we show you guys today um, just because there's so many other videos on YouTube of uh, reviews and they go through all the manuals and the specifications so uh, if you want to learn more about everything I suggest you know finding you know one of those videos um, however I will tell you what we do like about everything that we're using and how we use it and what we wish uh, was a little different so with that being said let's dive right into it okay let's start with the body the camera body now now keep in mind i don't have any experience when it comes to photography i'm not a professional by any means this is just a hobby taylor and i have and what we enjoy doing so um keep that in mind when i'm going through this equipment this is just my personal opinion on everything and just uh, what we like about everything so uh the the camera we went with was a sony a7 III now now remember i'm recording on it right now so i can't actually hold it up and show it for you guys i'll, I'll find a picture off google and put it right here or something um, but i do have the box for you that actually still has our order pickup label on it got from best buy um we'll start with the price so i paid about two thousand dollars for this camera i know right now there's specials out there for uh like seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars but uh i paid around two thousand dollars for this camera there there's others that i wanted the a7r4 and the a7r3 which uh might be a little better with regards to image sharpness because they're 48 and 60 megapixel cameras however that also means more data being used in the computer slower processing uh, not as good in low light situations so um, we ultimately decided to go with the a7 III uh, because we felt overall it, it was a, a better value uh, for the price uh, now keep in mind that two thousand dollar price point did not come with the lens that it's just the body of the camera so if you're going to invest in something like this you do need to set some money aside for a lens because what good is a camera without a lens some other reasons why we went with the Sony a7 III so there's a big debate right now between T uh, DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras uh, for those of you that don't know anything about cameras like I was six months ago uh, mirrorless is kind of the new technology uh, that's kind of you know sweeping everybody right now and it seems that everything's moving in that direction um, and mirrorless is definitely going to have support a lot longer matter of fact DSLRs are slowly kind of getting faded out already um, so I decided to go ahead and buy a mirrorless camera there are cheaper mirrorless cameras uh, out there even made by Sony anywhere from you know five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars overall the sony a7 III, we love it it's great for video it's great for photography it's great for anything you want to do um so yeah i highly recommend it if you have the budget two thousand uh, dollars yeah give it a shot okay next thing we're going to talk about is our lenses so right now i have two lenses that we primarily use one i'm recording on right now which is the Sony 24 to 70 G Master uh, f 2.8. Uh, so this lens is a great versatile all-around lens that goes from 24 millimeter focal length up to 70 millimeter focal length. So it really covers a lot of the most popular focal lengths. It's great for video, great for for pictures. Uh, one thing to note about the G Master, it is their their top of the line high end lens. There are Sony 24-70 f4s uh, that, that are for sale for, for quite a bit cheaper. I think around $1,200, however. But for this lens right here, uh, we paid about $2,000 for it. 
Um, but this is the primary lens we use. Most of our pictures that you see on Instagram, which I'll put some on the screen around me, um, are, are taken with the 24 to 70 G. Yeah, highly recommend this lens. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is our newer lens, which is the one we're primarily using for all of our pictures right now. And um, if you go to our Instagram page, we're really like the last four rows on our grid are taken with this camera, um, which I'll put some up around on the screen around me. But um, our the newest lens that we have is the Sony G Master 70 to 200 telephoto lens. This lens is awesome for for portraits, uh, for for really anything. Um, it is a longer focal length, so you can really zoom in, get nice compression on the pictures, really get that good bokeh um, around the subject. And if you guys don't know what bokeh is, it's where the background's blurred pretty much. Um, would you like to jump in here? Special appearance by Taylor and Coco. Bribing Coco to leave with food. The G Master 7200 is by far my favorite lens right now. Some drawbacks is, it stands out like a sore thumb because it's big, it's white. If you're trying to be discreet while taking pictures, it's not gonna happen with this lens, one. Uh, two, it is incredibly heavy. Matter of fact, when it's on the tripod, you it's got a mount right here separate for the tripod, but the tripod still wants to tip over and um, no no blame to the tripod. We have a nice tripod, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute, but this lens is, is incredibly incredibly heavy however it is super sharp um it's it's tack sharp the the colors on it are, are amazing the autofocus is pretty incredible and it's a fixed length which means when you zoom right now it's at 70 millimeters if i zoom to 200 millimeters it doesn't get any longer whereas the 24 to 70 actually gets longer and takes up more space so it is a fixed length however um it is heavy uh, for, for this lens, the, the 70-200, to 200, we paid about $2,500 for it. Uh, similar to the 24-70, to 70, um, here's the box for it by the way, but similar to the 24-70 to 70 G Master, uh, there is an F4 version out there that is a bit cheaper, however, it's not going to be as good in low light situations. Uh, you're not going to be able to get as focused as you are on the uh, 2.8 aperture, and this is a fixed aperture. Um, which means that when you zoom from 70 to 200, it remains at 2.8. A lot of the cheaper lenses, the, the aperture will actually move as you move the focal length, so that is a drawback. But the fixed 2.8 aperture is definitely worth it. If you have the budget, I highly recommend this lens. If you don't have the budget, I highly recommend getting at least the F4 aperture 70 to 200. I think everybody should have a telephoto lens and like I said, this is just my personal opinion. I'm not a professional photographer by any means, but uh, uh, it's just based off what we've you know experienced over the past couple of months using this lens. Uh, I highly recommend it if you can afford it. Okay, moving on to the tripod, and this is another quite frequent question Taylor and I get is how do we take our pictures together? Um, they always ask us, do you ask strangers to take your picture? Is somebody traveling with you? And in reality, None of those things are what we do. We actually just set the tripod up. Uh, the a7 III has a time-lapse mode where you can set it to take a picture every half second or one second. And uh, once we set it up, we get out in front of the lens, we dance, we run around, get a couple of pictures, and that's it. Um, and that's how we're doing everything on our own with nobody around. Uh, it's super easy. We're getting super quick at it. Um, but the tripod that we're using for all of this as well is the Manfrotto B-Free tripod. Um, I can't show you guys the actual tripod right now because the camera is sitting on it. Uh, but this tripod's great. It's made specifically for the Sony Alpha, but they do have models that are made for other manufacturers as well. Um, it's super light. It's, it's easy to fit in a backpack. I carry it on planes or, or it goes in my carry-on bag uh, when we travel. That way I don't have to check it. Um, it's, it's very versatile with multiple you know, heights and you can... Uh, configure the legs in a way if you're in an awkward position with rocks or something you can configure the legs to accommodate that um, but overall the Manfrotto B-Free B tripod is a phenomenal tripod. Um, I think we paid about $250 for this off Amazon um, which, which is actually a pretty cheap tripod. I've got expensive taste if you guys don't already know. Um, but $250 for a tripod like this is a great value. I know there were some tripods that are $500, $1,000, however, uh, but I do recommend you know, doing a bit of research. The last thing you want to do is get a cheap tripod where your expensive camera falls over and all of a sudden you're out five or $6,000 because your camera lens broke. So uh, invest in a good quality tripod. Manfrotto, be free, look them up. They're great. Uh, highly recommend it. 
Okay, next thing are our filters that we use to get specific pictures such as, you know, long exposures or, you know, higher contrast pictures. Well, I'll, I'll put some long exposures around the screen uh, or on the screen around me. Um, in order to do this, so for those of you that don't know what a long exposure is, is when you set the shutter speed to where the camera takes a picture over a span of um, anywhere from, you know, 0.1 seconds to 30 seconds, right? So if I set my shutter speed at 10 seconds, that means over the span of a 10 second period, the camera's gonna be scanning, taking a picture. That means if things move, it's gonna be blurry. Uh, however, when this is set up on the camera, it, it really only picks up light. So if you have a bright light that's moving around, you'll get a blur uh, and you can do what you call light painting, which I'll put some examples around me of how, of how we've done some light painting. Uh, but long exposures require the shutter speed to be um, much, much slower. And for those of you that don't know about cameras, between the, the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed, those things affect lighting. And as you slow the shutter speed down, more light gets in. So unless you have a filter on your camera, the picture is going to be really washed up, washed out, and all you're going to see is a white screen. So to counter that, you need a filter. Um, and the filters that we are using right now are the... I forgot who makes these. Um, Polar Pro, okay. The Polar Pro ND filter. So we have an ND1000 that we use uh, for long exposures when it's really bright outside. Um, it comes in real handy uh, when you're trying to get like the glassy water look and effect. Um, this is what we're using. This was, I believe, about $100 for the one filter. It is a fixed 1000 ND filter. Um, make sure when you do order filters it is the right thread for your lens so i order all of my filters in 82 millimeter to accommodate the biggest lens that we have uh, and then you can get a little step down uh, conversions to accommodate for your smaller lenses like 77 millimeter and on so uh, nd 1000 is what you need to get like the smooth water uh, pictures and do long exposures when it's really bright outside Another filter that we use quite a bit is the six to nine variable ND filter to get that one over 50 shutter speed when videoing. Uh, this, is, this comes in handy, like I said, if you're videoing outside and you want that good bokeh behind you so you don't wanna mess with the aperture, um, you need a filter to get the slower shutter speed, that way your video is smooth. Uh, right now we're shooting one over 50 shutter speed and when, if you were to take this outside, since it's a very bright outside, all you would see is a white screen. So uh, this filter accommodates that, it makes it darker and it's definitely needed for video. Just a tip, the six to nine filter, the variable filter, is expensive. I paid three hundred dollars for this. Uh, however, like everything else, if you have the budget, it's worth it. Um, highly recommend it. And this is the Peter McKinnon version. Um, for those of you that don't know who he is, look him up on uh, YouTube. He's uh, his videos taught me a lot about uh, cameras when I was just getting started, and uh, uh, they're very fun to watch. So look him up. Okay guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just ran through the, the main items that we use when we, we take pictures and travel. Um, if you have any other questions about anything else that we're doing or using, don't forget to drop a comment below. Uh, also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. That's much appreciated. And just a heads up, during our next video, which will probably be uh, dropping next week, we're going to announce a giveaway for our subscribers. So uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends to come check the channel out, and we'll see you next time.